Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Transformers fans everywhere, welcome back, LPS. Last Prime Speculator, here to bring you a spoiler-free review of the Bumblebee movie. If you're new to this channel, make sure to consider subscribing and turn on all notifications. That way you can stay updated with all my videos. Let's start with the director and the direction of this movie. This is the first movie that is not directed by Michael Bay. This is Travis Knight's first experiment of a live-action film. He normally does more animation. And I gotta admit, guys... This movie, you could totally tell certain things of certain plots, certain eye candy, certain moments, the difference between Michael Bay and the difference between Travis Knight. For instance, the first thing I noticed right away is the colors, the, the, the color scheme. The colors were so much simplified. You could tell the difference between an Autobot, a Decepticon, you could tell a Decepticon fight, you could tell an Autobot fight, and the, the cameras weren't as aggressive in a way. You know with Michael Bay, you'd either get it right in your face. In this movie, I feel like Travis Knight wanted to make sure we visually were in tune with the, the Transformers and the humans as well. Something else that I thought was really awesome about this too is that there were a lot of humans in this movie. This was the first movie where I felt like it wasn't a problem. And this is why I felt like this was actually a really good thing is that I felt every time that there was a human presence, there was a Transformer presence. And if you really think about it, that is Transformers. Unfortunately, I know we, we, we always want that, that big Cybertron movie, all CGI, might take a long time. All the humans that were in this, there was a Transformer present, and that was something that I thought was very, very, a, very, a, a big relief in a way. Every time we saw Haley, Bumblebee was there. Whenever we saw Sector 7, the, uh, the Decepticons were present, without spoiling anything, right? Spoiler free here. But I thought that was something that was done very well. And the, the humor was also very good. You could tell the difference between the Michael Bay humor and the Travis Knight humor. You could also tell that this was not just made by a Transformers fan. This was a, a hungry director. I feel Travis Knight is a very, very hungry director. And this the reason why this movie, I think, did very well was because we had a good director in the director's chair for this movie. And I think Travis did an absolute phenomenal, phenomenal job. It, it was very well directed. You could see he's passionate about this, and I think that's something that was very uh, has been lacking in the Transformers live action films for a long time. Is that this was handled with love, and I'm telling you, Travis Knight, man, I hope I hope he stays in the uh, the, the Transformers live action universe because I, he was born born to do this, in my opinion. One thing I also loved in, uh, that came from Travis Knight is how he built Charlie and how he built. B in this. Charlie and B's relationship was 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 beautiful. I teared up a couple times. I had to hold it back together a couple times. And you guys all know I'm an emotional person. I love this stuff. But it was it was sing, it was single moments that had that wow factor. They that gave you the goosebumps again. The magic of Transformers is what I always used to always talk about. And if you really think about the magic of Transformers, the beginning was a human and a Transformer. And this one, the relationship with Charlie and B is is so perfectly well done. I felt they were actually, like, th th they were real. Like, th th this was a real relationship that Charlie and B together was real. And that's what makes a great movie is that it doesn't feel forced at times. You know, it felt everything was so, so natural. And when you see Charlie and B bond in, like, the, 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 the cute moments where she's teaching him how to uh, basically hide and be a robot in disguise, and also the epic moments when, um, you know, at the ending scene, the, the final scenes, the, the, the fighting, all that, it felt real. It felt like there was a unique bond there. And it brought me back to the first Transformers movie with Sam Woodwicky and, um, and Bumblebee. This one, though, this felt right. It felt right. And um, I feel that Travis Knight and Haley Steinfeld and Bumblebee, they were, and John Cena, all of them, they were all on the same page. And that's something that was like, I mean, sometimes less is more, and you have to remember that. I love how this was marketed in the 80s. Everything was from the 80s. The I love how um, the way they were dressed, the way the interior and the exterior of houses looked in California. The soundtrack, oh man, the soundtrack is so good. When you guys hear the soundtrack, you're going, there's a couple of Easter eggs in there too. And uh, uh, one thing I loved about my theater too is that we had a good balance between uh, young Transformers fans and adults. And you could hear some of the songs come out, and you could hear a lot of the adults starting to laugh and everything. And um, th th there's a couple of songs that will come in there, and you're going to be like, wow, oh my gosh, when you're a Transformers fan, you'll know exactly what they, what that song, those songs are. I thought that was something that was also really done well, is how this was also a, it was a kid-friendly movie, and also adults loved it as well. 
and you could feel that in the theater. And the best part about my theater is my theater was completely full. Um, that's something else I was very excited about, and something I was looking forward to is to see the the butts in those chairs. Because last time I went to see it last night, it was me, and my wife, and a couple of people, and that was it. No, that my theater was completely full. But the '80s itself, that's Transformers, and again, that's something that was forgotten about that I think Travis Knight did very well is everything in tuned with the 80s now i want to just talk about Haley steinfeld in this um charlie her character i think charlie was perfectly perfectly cast i absolutely adored her character this was the first human that i really really loved now you guys all know i'm a huge mark Wahlberg fan but Haley steinfeld is the right person the right human for a transformers live action universe movie I thought she was also great in Enter the Spider-Verse. I think, I think she's got a real knit for this. I think she's extremely talented, and I hope they keep her, because from uh, even her story, um, without spoiling anything, she is dealing with typical kid problems. She's kind of an outcast, and I think, and the thing about Haley Steinfeld that I love so much is she was extremely relatable. I feel like that everybody has had a moment where they've been in Charlie's shoes and can relate to, whether if it's you know, certain scenes without, without getting into any spoilers, you'll see some of this stuff, She's extremely relatable, and she's extremely likable. And her bond with her and B, and the teaching she does for him, it's so well done. And Haley Steinfeld, props to you. Best human character in the Transformers live action universe. And I hope, I hope she comes back, and I hope they, they do something with her in the future, because I, I feel like she was perfectly perfectly cast for this role, and was meant, is meant to do this. Now let's talk about John Cena. John Cena was all right. I mean, no, nothing really special. Um, you know, he had some, he had some, uh, you know, funny moments. He was some comic relief and everything. He didn't have those cringe moments. I know some people say he's a little dry. Um, he wasn't too bad. Um, you'll, he'll have a, he'll have a couple of moments in there. And, um, um, like the trailers talked about, you know, he's kind of, he's not really a, a, a villain in this. He's more of a guy in question, like a military guy trying to protect Earth. Um, like the, I know it's showed in the uh, the commercials without spoiling in some of the trailers that he said, you know, they call him Decepticons. It doesn't show any red flags. He does stuff like that where he he doesn't trust the Transformers, and who would? You see him come down to Earth, these robots. It, it's very it, it's believable. I mean, and I think that was something else that was uh, done decently well compared to the last one is that the humans weren't just so cringy and evil, and you wanted to kill them. John Cena, John Cena did all right. I mean, it is what it is. I wouldn't say he did you know the, the best, but he also didn't do the worst, and he he was fine in my opinion. I didn't mind him. Now, Shatter and Dropkick. Let's talk about Shatter and Dropkick. Shatter and Dropkick are phenomenal. Uh, Angela Bassett, I don't know, I can't remember who did uh, Dropkick's voice, but these two Decepticons were awesome. They were so well done. They were well written. They were part of the story. They had a role. They weren't just there to die. They had a purpose. They were well written. This was probably one of the best Decepticons I've seen. I'll talk more, a little more about it in uh, this is my spoiler video, but Shatter and Dropkick were great in this. This was meant to be a real Transformers movie. They were deceptive. Um, they were great, man. I mean, the triple changes were awesome. And the one thing I loved is you could tell them apart from their colors. Shatter being red, Dropkick being blue. That's something that is forgotten about. And something that I really appreciated is that we could tell that these who these characters were. We knew they were Decepticons. And I'm telling you, Angela Bassett did a great job as Shatter. I really like these characters. Um, I was a little, um, I was all in on the Shatter dropkick. I was kind of, you know, feeling it out. I wasn't too sure. They nailed it. They were great villains. Now, Blitzwing, Blitzwing was awesome. I loved Blitzwing's voice. I'm just going to leave it at that, my spoiler-free review. Um, but Blitzwing, I enjoyed. And I'm just going to leave it at that with Blitzwing. A great thing about this movie, though, is that in this movie... There's so many Easter eggs there. If you're a Transformers fan back in the 80s, if you're part of the Lost Generation Transformers like I am, or if you're a Bayformers fan, there's Easter eggs throughout all this movie. And it's pretty cool because you get to see, oh, I remember that, oh, I saw that. And like I said, the soundtrack is phenomenal as well, but there's tons and tons and tons of Easter eggs in this that I think you're all, the audience, is going to really enjoy, especially if you're a Transformers fan. You'll notice a lot of them. The big surprise for me was all the Transformers cameos in this. There was a lot more Transformers in this than I expected. I thought they were just going to have Blitzwing, Shatter, B, and Dropkick, and that was it. No, no, no. There's a lot, a lot of Transformers cameos. They're quick, but my God, when you see them, you're going to be like, wow, oh my gosh, he or she is in this movie. 
just j just wait till you see the Battle of Cybertron. That's all I'm gonna say. The Battle of Cybertron is phenomenal. Um, I'm gonna get more depth in that in my spoiler spoiler video. But there is a lot, a lot of Transformers cameos in this movie, and that was it was actually a very uh, nice and pleasant surprise if you ask me. Now let's talk about Bumblebee. And Bumblebee, this is a solo film. This is an origin story of a hero named Bumblebee, the Scout, as we all know from and who ends up in the Bayverse becoming Optimus Prime's head lieutenant. I was nervous about this. I was worried that, like, how can Bumblebee himself carry a movie, a solo movie, by himself? And shame on me, because he can. Um, I always looked at Bumblebee, it, when I thought Bumblebee was going to do his own movie, I wasn't that hype, I, I'm guilty of that. And again, shame on me, because he can carry a film, man. From, from, it just says so much about a character that can't talk how much Travis Knight brought him to life. He's so likable, and he's so sweet, and he's also so, such a badass, too. Bumblebee did a phenomenal, phenomenal job carrying a solo Origins movie. I'm shocked. I did not think he would be able to do that, and he's definitely going up there in my ranks in uh, Transformers now, because now I understand it. I understand him in the Bayverse. Um, I understand him in this one. He is an extremely likable character, and I think it's very smart now that they're doing Bumblebee as leading in his own role. And here's what I'm saying: is that like I said, when I was talking about my theater, they were talking. They were. I said it was a very well balanced between adults and children. He's the perfect one to start this young generation of new Transformers fans and hoping to bring the magic back into Transformers. He, the the the, the yellow Volkswagen was perfectly well done. Perfectly well done. It's something, the cuteness, it's a callback to G1, and it's done so well. Bumblebee can market that younger audience and bring them and keep the love of Transformers going for years and years to come, and hopefully keep creating films. And that's what we all want in the Transformers community. We want more Transformers movies, and we want more, more Transformers content. And I want this stuff because it helps me expand my channel as well and keeps me making videos now let me tell you how i always do my reviews in these movies we judge everything with a energon or a dark energon an energon think of it as a tomato if it's an energon i recommend this movie if it's a dark energon think of it as a rotten tomato and that's how we grade all these transformer films and all my movies i do it with energon or dark energon so you guys already know i'm giving this an Energon, guys, go see this movie. You're going to love it. It's a great movie. It's got a 94% Rotten Tomatoes for a reason. And there's a reason why I'm giving it Energon. is because it is a great movie. It's not just a great Transformers movie. It's a great movie. You're going to have a great time. So I hope that answers that for you. Um, I, like I said, I highly recommend I'm not just saying this because I'm a Transformers fan. I'm saying this because I'm a fan, and I think you will become a fan of this. This is a new beginning and a new hope for Transformers. If you're new to this channel, make sure to consider subscribing and turn on all notifications. Make sure to like and share this video. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Prime Speculator as well. That way I can keep up to date and, um, you know, we can talk and communicate. Don't forget to follow me. All my information is down below in the links. Now, coming out next will be my spoiler review. We're going to be talking about all the stuff I really liked in this movie and the things that I think we need to discuss. So make sure to stay tuned. I'll have that up shortly. This is LPS here to bring you another spoiler-free review. Peace.